Good evening, everyone. This beautiful, it's not spring, summer, May evening. I am so delighted to have Edmund de Waal, the eminent author and artist, to join me. And I've just said, um, oh, he's joined. So he's here already. Um, he declined, apparently. Let's try again. Send request. Um, we're going to talk about his fascinating and very brilliant new book, Letters to Camondo. But also, I think, about lots of things associated to do, that, to do with that, to do with memorial and memory and the invisibility of death. Um, and, I mean, I've got so many questions I want to discuss with him and hear his views. I'm just wondering where he's got to, because he did follow. Let's try again. Edmund de Waal, send request. Edmund, if you've got a problem, maybe tell me um, what's going on. Hello, everybody. Hello, Gunnell. Hello, Lizzie. Hello, Juliet. Hello, Grace. Hello, Christine, and hello, Cloda and Donna. I'm sorry we haven't quite started yet. Hi, Lucy, and sober teacher. Um, uh, I'm sending a request and he's not joining. Do you want to write me a message, Edmund? Are you having a problem? Um, I know that you're online. I can feel you panicking if you haven't done this before. Uh, Edmund is unable to join. I don't know why that is. Shall I try again? I keep trying. Edmund, oh. can you get... Oh, there you are. Hello, 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 hello Julius. You could feel my panic. <laughs> I could feel your panic. You could feel um, my panic. I was trying to keep breathing and, 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 and send a connection to you, Julia. <laughs> well, you, you arrived and the connection is strong. And I feel a little bit intimidated and scared of meeting someone as eminent as you, oh, but really also nice. delighted. I mean, this book is an extraordinary book. Um, and there are so many places we could start. I guess, should we start by you kind of explaining how the book came about, what inspired you and what you kind of, what your, the traces of your tracks that got you to well, the book and it being published? Well, first of all, actually, I'm absolutely thrilled to be in conversation with you. And, and can I wave your books around? Which are, oh, my goodness. Because um, um, I, 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 I follow you and feel like I've been in conversation with you for several years. So it's, oh, wow. I it's didn't really that. wonderful and, and, and marvellous to actually see you uh, and actually begin to sort of un tease some of this out. I mean, the, this, this, this book, this particular new book came out of, of really, um, I had an invitation to, to make an exhibition for this extraordinary house in Paris. It's a family house. Um, and then um, um, it's a house that belonged to um, uh, cousins of my grandmother's. Um, it was a house that was built as a memorial. <laughs> that, perhaps we could talk about that. It was a yes, house yes. that was built out of mourning. It was a house built in grief for a lost son, a son who, who, who was killed during the First World War. And then subsequently, after the house was given by uh, Moïse de Camondo, this Jewish um, collector, cousin uh, to the French state and he died in 1935. His, his remaining daughter, her husband and their children were deported and murdered in Auschwitz. So it, it changes shape, it, one act of mourning, it becomes a different house, a house which is inhabited by absence. And, and it's a house I've known for a long time. I was supposed to be making an exhibition for it. And then last year happened to us all. And I found myself um, in that silence last year, starting to write, write to him, <laughs> writing to this man who died in 1935. And um, it's really, um, I started to write him about 
about what it is to try and um, try and work out loss. Um, I tried to write to him about what happened to his his daughter and granddaughter and granddaughter and grandson. So it it it, it it's it's intensely personal, Julia. And it, but it happened out of it that silence. Personal. I mean, all things are personal. <laughs> you know, everything is personal. But but this this happened out of, in that particular strange way. Um, I mean, I there I, in some ways I don't know where to begin. But the, you know, the house is a site of memorial when, so I, I've got a, a quote from your grandfather, which about the death of um, Nissim, which is Hebrew for miracle. And it seemed it was the reverse of a miracle in some way. It was a sort of catastrophe. But um, the catastrophe has broken and changed all my plans. And, you know, the death of a child, whatever age, is tears up the rule book of life it completely obliterates everything that you believe in and trust because it reverses what we expect and what we hope from life and always death is invisible once <laughs> once the person has died yeah. but in nissim's case it was he was particularly invisible because he, he been killed in the first world war he never saw the body he wasn't repatriated and so the, the presence of absence, but also the invisibility of the reality of his death meant that he, it, in some ways his death was surreal. And it felt like the unmoving of building the house mm. was trying to pin something with objects and bricks and beauty because he... he couldn't face the reality of his death. I mean, grief is, a, is adaptive, it's a process, but loops of stuck grief, of grief that is complex, is when you have to pin everything down. I, and I, like that house, everything was pinned down. I've I haven't let you interrupt me, but I can let you know. No, 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 <laughs> I, I, I'm so, so glad to be talking about this because that's exactly how I feel about it. And I, I write about this, house as an act of mourning but that he is stuck so what he does is is i say that you know, he wants to make this house as a memorial for his son and 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 hand it over to france as a kind of beautiful gift to france about but actually what i think he's doing is he's making a house for his son to come home to yes i think you see i think what that he's doing is that, is that he's 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 calibrating every single beautiful piece of furniture and the porcelain and everything else like that, you know, and yeah. endlessly fiddling and moving things around. And it is an endless loop because I think he feels that the, the gate onto the Route Monceau will open and his son will cross the gravel and come in and sit down and have supper with him. So I think he's, I think he's lost in his grief. Um, and 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 the house becomes a sim a symbol of of his stuck of his stuckness. He says, I mean, it's so extraordinary. He says, when he writes his will to hand the house over to France, he says, "Don't move anything." I think, you know, where I put a photograph of of my son, it has to stay there, and so this house is has this extraordinary, I mean, before the tragedy of the, the, the subsequent tragedy of-, of Yeah, yeah, it was multiple what, tragedies. Um, the, the first thing is, is that it, 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 is, it is stuck. And, you know, and, and we, we, we know an encounter that, the, the, that, I mean, repetition, rep, repetition is com a complicated thing. And I, I know this from my own life as someone who makes pots repeatedly, I, returning, I hope creatively to something in order to unblock something. But when you encounter um, that stuckness, that that don't move anything because um, I have to I have to keep a space where where there is a possibility of return is so painful. Do you see? Because I was kind of musing on epigenetics and transgenerational patterns and the idea that the generation that hasn't resolved the difficulties, the losses, the mourning, the secrets, the suicides, yeah. Yeah. transfer the unresolved losses to the next generation. 
and they keep passing down until someone can bear the pain. And I was, you know, when you, your kind of fascination with objects which came before the mm. book, mm. but from it, a history of mm. unimaginable loss. It, does that kind of ignite anything new? Does that connect to do anything with you? It, 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 profoundly. I mean, I, I, I seem to have spent the last, I don't think, Lord knows how long, retracing bits of my family story and, and into places of, 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 of trauma, of, of, of loss, sort of trying to, trying, to, trying to work out what loss and displacement really means. And it, and it, ends, up, it ends up in books sometimes, you know, it ended up in a, a, the first book I wrote about the hell with amber eyes. Yeah. Uh, um, and, it, and, and it seems to have ended up again in this book here. But, 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 but I, 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 at every point, I'm, I suppose I'm trying to, trying to find the agency. Um, um, to shift to, something. Is it to shift something? To shift is something. It to, or is it to make invisible visible? It's, it's, it's both. What, one is, I, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think that the lost are lost. So I, I, I don't believe in, in, in the, in the nameless lost, in nameless lost people. I, I suppose I, 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 I suppose as a maker and storyteller, I want to go back and find them and give them um, valency and, and, and name, name them again and walk, walk okay. with them back into history. And, yeah. and, and I suppose I sort of passionately believe that that's possible. Um, uh, and, and that's also why I make things because I sort of feel like you, you make something exactly and then, and then, and then you can hand that on. And, and so, you know, it's a, comp it's a very complicated business, you know, and I, I, it's partly this, this inheritance of, inheritance of loss or inheritance of, or, um, oh is, is, some, is something that, that I, I, I try and work with. I mean, there are lots of pistons going off in my head, but yeah. <laughs> one of yeah. the ones is someone said to me, heaven is being a memory to others. So that, that you know, that is mm. where we can find someone. And mm. as I understand you and as you explain yourself, you go back and remember people through the objects, kind of bridging their lived experience to stories to bring them to the present in some ways. Um, so that we, so that the museum isn't just a blank museum, not very visited museum, that was also done as an act of love for France, yeah, and then yeah. France betrayed that act of love yeah. in, and mm. assimilation. Um, and we could talk hours about assimilation, but I don't know if we can get to that. But one of the things I think about is that when you connect with objects and you find stories and you develop the stories inside yourself, Mm. The story you tell yourself becomes who you are. So you, as the artist, are changed and shaped by the process of finding stories and telling the stories. And then we, as the reader, are changed too. Well, I, I absolutely believe that. I think, I think that you... Uh, and in a, in a funny kind of way, what, well, of course what happens to you is you become an avatar. You become, you become in some sense... Did you become mostly? But you, but you care about. I mean, this is this is. There's always a moment when you suddenly realise that that someone was real. <laughs> you know, there was a moment when my father, uh, who's now in his nineties, talked about his grandfather who had this extraordinary, and unbelievable. This is Charles Efrusi. Uh, Victor Efrusi, and he, he ended, ended, ended up. You know, his uh, um, his wife, my great grandmother committed suicide trying to escape and etc etc and he ends up you know um, um as a refugee in tunbridge wells having lost everything and my father said that in the evenings he used he watched his father in, uh, grandfather and he used to w w move his hand across his face like he was trying to wipe sort of away a memory wipe, wipe away and, and and become someone else and the moment my father talked about that i thought this person existed this this person was struggling with unfathomable um, um, loss. 
I, and I have to I have to get to know and walk with that person and so then you write a book you know then but of course it doesn't end you know <laughs> it doesn't end it's not about con it's never concluded and I think that's such a profound real thing Julia it's, it's, it's that thing it's of not, closure is the most overrepresented un, it's hideous untruthful yeah kind of a, proponent I mean because one of the things I, I, I agree it doesn't end so I've been working with four generations of an ultra Jewish Orthodox family mm. and I, I I know I can talk about them because they've let me talk yeah. about them in yeah. my book, new book and one of the things that I'm talking about there is that the Holocaust didn't end in 1945 yeah. it's living in 2021 so one of the people I've been working with is a 90 year old Holocaust survivor. And one of the things that gives her a sense of safety and belonging, which all of us is what we fundamentally need in order to be able to get on with life and love and connect yeah. and yeah. have children yeah. and work yeah. and all of those things, is that she knows that she's going to have a named stone in Israel to be buried because her entire family was murdered and there's no mark for that grave. But they, as a family, have um, named some of their, their family members who died. And they talk about, when they, when they were talking to me, they were talking about where they're going to be placed. Like they were talking about someone sitting around a dining room table at dinner. Yes. That it, it was very, both poignant, incredibly significant, but also kind of casual. It was a, a funny thing. But, but 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 isn't that wonderful? Yes. Because because actually, of course, you know, we, th that that relation that 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 intimacy with the people who we have who are, who 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 have died, that intimacy with people who who have gone, um, and that recognition that they that we somehow inhabit parts of them with their mem memory and pass on stories if we can. Um, you know, is 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 a is a really profound thing. I think, um, um, and it, so it it can allow a, a freedom and an agency. It's not about closure. It's never ever about closure, but actually, it, it is a slightly different space, a sort of parallel space where where you can still talk to the people you care and love, uh, and actually, have died. Yeah. I mean, that's I the bad place to get to. That is a, it's a, it's a, in my mind, it's a healthy place to get to. So what I talk about with clients or, or people mm. like a lot of you listening now, who I really appreciate your kind of po positive remarks. Mm. Um, do ask questions if you have any. Is, is that the, the reality, the, the task of mourning, which um, Moishi didn't do, is facing the reality of the death. So he got stuck in that bit. But the relationship with the person never dies. The love continues. And it's through touchstones to memory that you keep the relationship alive so that you can do it internally and ask your father, your grandfather, your brother, your child, should I buy this house? Should I, what do you think of this pink car? Or you can have like your black jars. The minute I saw your black jars for your new exhibition, I thought they were for ashes. I mean, that is my world, yeah. I have to yes. say. Yes. But or you can have them through yeah. ashes that don't get scattered or jewelry, or in, in Moshi's case, a, a museum. But I also tell people to write letters, postcards. I had a wonderful client who wrote postcards, just like four lines. Yeah. And what I wonder about is the the lack of response from postcards. I mean, I feel it's useful yeah. to write, mm. but you had silence as a response. Yeah, I mean, that's the idiotic thing, Julia, is, is of course, I, I spend last year writing these letters and then um, the book gets published in whenever it was and it comes back to me and I realise, <laughs> I'm so stupid, I realise, of course, he never writes, he never rings. You know, there is a huge silence in that book. It's, it's a one-way correspondence into history, but into that family. And so of course, it's, it's, it, they're letters to him and to my family, but they're also letters to myself, testing out how to be with loss, you know, how, how, to, how to think about bereavement, 
how to think about mourning, um, how to, uh, and, and what, what does a memorial mean? You know, um, what on earth does it mean to, 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 to have, have a space you can go back to? Um, what does that do to you? How does that affect you? Um, you know, um, what's, an, what's a kind of appropriate size and scale of memorial? you know, for, 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 for loss. So all these things go, you know, I'm sending these letters out, but I'm also sending them, of course, to myself, desperately trying to work out, I suppose, who I am. I mean, that's all. <laughs> did you, did you, what did you, what did you work out? What do I work out? I, what did God. you work out? Well, I, I didn't mean uh, answers in uh, that sort of simplistic okay. way, but. Well, I suppose, I suppose some of the things I work out um, are, are, are in the process of working out um, are, are that um, that it is unfinished, that that everything of significance is an unfolding act of of <sighs> recognizing recognizing the fissures and the breakages and um within within myself the, the ruptures moment, the ruptures and i there, but you I, mend a lot well i've i've, I've got a With plate gold. i've got a plate for you here can i show you my plate to you yes. so you know this is this is this is it oh wow so oh is, my goodness can I, can I show you this big julie yes this is show us all. Last, so this is this is a Meissen plate. It's a German porcelain plate from the 18th century. It was part of a Jewish family collection, the Klemperer family in, in, in Dresden. Their house was looted by the Nazis in 38. They fled, some of them were murdered in, in the camps. These plates were in Dresden during the firestorm, the bombing of Dresden in 1945 and were destroyed. They were in fragments. They were found after the war. They were put in a cardboard box. They were restituted to the family uh, 15 years ago. And, and, and the fragments came up for auction. And I bought them thinking I wanted a family to have these plates again. And for the last few years, a Japanese artist, Michael Tsutsumi, has been doing kintsugi, this golden repair. On, but it's not repair. The wound so, is always there. The it, it, scar they, is always there. They, you don't fix stuff. They, you don't fix. You show loss, and 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 you you navigate that loss, and uh, you know. So here is an object which has come through all that, and what it does is 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 to reveal reveal history, and and then you can pick it up again, and when you pick it up again, you're holding something like you're holding like you're holding someone really you're help, you know, you're touching someone you're touching a story um and 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 at that point words sort of fall away julia to be honest because it is an act it's part of a it's part of mourning you know it's 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 actually is touching someone in a, in a story and 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 also handing something on in a I don't want to overdo it, but in a, in, a, in, in a beautiful way. I mean, what I get from what you're saying, and I think do words do fail, obviously, is that you have to feel the pain and recognise the breaking and the wounds mm. and the agony and the sort of despair, all the aspects of grief. Mm. And you can't get over that. You can't fix it. You can't forget and move on. And you certainly don't have closure. But what you can, which what which is what Moishi didn't do, mm. you can. I don't know if the word is it rebuild. I don't know if it's build. I don't know if it's rebuild or. But you can make something out of the rubble. That includes the rubble, that is beautiful, that you can learn to live with. Yeah, it, 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 sometimes, and I think it's. <laughs> it, I mean, and I think I think I think Julie the. I mean, it's what you do in your books and everything you say. Is there isn't there's there's no formula. There, there's no. no shape for this. This isn't a, this isn't a this is a this is a thing that I find helpful. You know, as as part of my practice of living and making and storytelling. 
and, in, and, and healing as a and healing and healing and trying to work out who I am and trying to work out my complicated relationship with my dad and my family and who I am and faith and all that stuff so this is a way of doing it and if that image of kintsugi of brokenness and whatever works for someone else that's fantastic and if it if it if it doesn't then you know you just let it go that there are, yeah, i think that is very kind of accommodating that there isn't a right or a wrong way but yeah. we can find ways of expressing for ourselves that fit for us yeah and philip rafferty has got mm. um, an interesting question how did you how did or did being a parent impact this project for you? I, I, I mean, oh God. Um, <laughs> I mean, in a funny kind of way, when I wrote my first book, The Hair with Amber Eyes, it, it, was a, it was a sort of desperate thing because my dad was getting older and my children were growing up. And I, is your dad I was, still alive? He is, yes. And I, I kind of, in some ways, the, that whole journey was an attempt to kind of make a, make my father who never t talked about things talk and be able to communicate something to my children. So that, in that sense, it was very, I was very much in the middle generation and wanted to do something in order to, 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 to affect change in the family um, for to my children. Is it, was it, is the effect, the change, is it to shift energy, stuckness? Yes, stuckness, stuckness. So a, a, a parallel of what was happening with Moshi, yeah. somehow yeah. was yeah. coming yeah. down the generations, a sort of yeah. block, blockiness. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, I, you know, I, I, I've always worked, thought, you know, um, I, 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 I've, I've got a dad um, um, who speaks with a strong Austrian accent who won't talk about his childhood. Yeah. What, you know there's something there yes. i mean so but but as a as a parent you know what um i mean everything is about everything is trying to, to is trying in some way to um not to ha not to hand on your own mess yes uh, so you're you're um, doing the work so that it's cleaner for the next generation yes if the word if the word is cleaner but I don't know. I don't think it is the right. Yeah, it's not the right word, is it? Right. But it's 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 um it's um more fluid. Fluid. I love fluidity. I'll take fluidity any day of the week. Because you not, like weather. Not, you like you talk about weather. You like weather, don't oh, you? Oh oh oh! I do. I do. Well, I and weather think... people therapists use weather for emotions all the time. There's a parallel: external I... weather, internal weather, storms, the fluidity, rain, wind, sun, changing seasons. There's a parallel, no? God, I wish I had a. I, perhaps if I talked to you a year ago before I wrote it, I wouldn't have written the book. I'd be. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that about weather, Julia. I did. No, I mean, I, 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 I write to Maurice saying, you know. I'm English, so I'm going to talk to you about the weather. It's, it's how we how how we start conversations. It's a way of, of bridging bridging any, bridging any social, social embarrassment. So I'm going to yeah. talk to you about the weather, but I didn't think about that about that emotion. But I talk, I do talk to him about wanting to run round his house and open all the windows. But he says have got he says have got to be kept closed because he hates dust. And I do talk to him a lot about dust because dust, yeah. dust threads its way through my life. I say, actually, dust, ju dust is good because dust shows you that something's happened. It shows you that time has passed. It's, it's not to be um, um, avoided. Well, you know, dust, dust is an interesting indicator of something. Anyway. That's interesting. And traces. And so traces. I, I'm just going to, some of the people watching um, yeah. have made some remarks. So, Natasha said, I work with women who lost their mothers at a young age. I believe grief is an opportunity for deep transformation. I also lost my mother at 14. I'm so sorry, Natasha. And she was an artist. I've always had her work around me. That's a lovely thing. Yes, yes, yes. Um, that, that's extraordinary. Yes. Um, so what happened? I'm not sure what this question means. What happens if you are unable to live the person? Maybe not uh, love. Yeah. Ah, if you weren't loving the person, that is a big old thing. Yes, you have to yes. you have to grieve the father or parents or whoever it was you yes. didn't have and the love you didn't feel, and then you can reconnect with them. But that's a whole story. That's a uh, that's that's a, that's a huge story. 
that. Perhaps not getting over, but coming to terms. Mm. Yeah, I think we uh, coming to terms, accommodation. Mm. Uh, Patsy, you're blazing a trail, Edmund. You're showing people a new level of sensitivity. And but, somebody else, you. shut up, Arpit said, I love you, Edmund. Mwah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're loved. Know that you're well, loved. Um, well, I, I, I just I, something else. No, that's it. So someone is talking about trauma, agency, fluidity. Basically, the only, only important things in life. Well, love as well. So should we end talking about love? Can we? Yeah. Can we? Because, because you know, um, it's it's. Um, I think. I think. I think. I think the act of going in, going into into the past, into traumatic places, and f finding the people who who and find and loving them, actually, going back and loving them, isn't isn't unimportant. <laughs> I'm feeling a bit tearful actually. Yes. Finding, that, finding that finding that actually quite a difficult thing to say, Julia. But yeah. that's actually all right. Is that you go back into history and you love them, yeah. And you love them for who they were and yeah. what happened to them and the act of loving is in some way transformational like that natasha talked about in the sense that your relationship with them once you've had the courage to dare to go back and visit the agony of the story mm -hmm. and embrace them and learn about them it changes them from being this kind of block inside you and opens you internally and frees you in a way to love them. And then that changes you, you know, that, it does. that releases you. It does, which is probably why I want to cry because as you know, all yes. re releases, finds all kinds of ways. It can be in books, but it also can be talking to someone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. goodness. My goodness. Well, oh, can I just show everybody a picture of um, Nis How do you say Nisim? Nisim. 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 There he is. I, 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 so I handsome. I know. And if you see that picture, you see a father and a son sitting and they've got their legs crossed yeah. in the same way. And you think, I saw that and I thought, oh, hang on. They loved each other, you know. Yes. So there you go. Julia, thank you. I've absolutely loved this. So far. I hope we can um, have another conversation another time. And thank you, everybody, for all your lovely comments and engagement with us. Um, and I give you a big kiss, Edmund. And thank you for giving this to us in the world and all of your work. And, and, Both and, your pots and your hair with amber eyes. You you help us understand things that are hard to understand, and I feel very grateful to you, Julia. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. Goodbye.